Good afternoon, class. My name is Jada Dennis, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. Welcome to another lecture given by the Chicago North Side Branch. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Cooper Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Chicago Northside branch was established in the year 2007. At this time, I would like to introduce you to our school officials. The Dean of the Chicago Northside branch is Dr. John Quates and the president is Dr. Patrick Latorchi. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and that there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord and God must have a name also. Jesus is a name but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus, and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name and title of our Father and His Son. Christ is the title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything that abides, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, he took on shape and form right within himself. This is the word as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood with divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai 
and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes round about. These three compartments make up the one true tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in it that is made operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside branch are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose and plan operating through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth Today's class will be over um, the scripture lesson, Zechariah, the 13th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Amir Coleman. But first, we will have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. Good afternoon, class. May we please bow high to my Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we come to you with great humbleness, and we want to just thank you for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We want to thank you for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear what thus said Yahweh through the vessels he bring to the fore. We also want to thank you once again for just allowing us to know you. We are so ever grateful because you chose us from the foundation of the world. And there's no words to express how grateful and thankful that we are that you have given us an opportunity to know you for ourselves. We want to ask that you please just keep encouraging us and admonishing us to come to class so we can get a more perfect understanding of you. There's so much to know, and we just want to thank you once again. And just keep giving us the encouragement and admonishment to want to know you. All of these things we ask in your beloved son named Yahshua Messiah. May the class say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.V. Trainer, reprinted by the Oxford Promotions. This is Zechariah, the 13th chapter. In that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David, into the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. 
It shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and un the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. And it shall and it shall come to pass that when any shall <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of Yahweh. And his father and his mother that begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed. Every one of his vision when he hath prophesied neither shall they wear a priestly garment to deceive but he shall say i am no prophet i am an husbandman for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth and one shall say unto him what are these wounds in thy hands then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Mm. Awake, mm -hmm. O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. That was Zechariah, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Now we'll have a selection by the Chicago Northside Branch. Without Yahshua, you wouldn't know how to pray. Without Yahshua, 
Keanu Jackson and our scripture reader, Dr. Amir Coleman, and for the Chicago Northside Choir. It's a pleasure to call our first speaker this afternoon, Dr. John Quates. No? Huh? 
Doctor, I'm sorry, got it wrong. Uh, Dr. Patrick Latortu. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. I am today. I was not today, but yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and I'm happy to be here. I guess that's what I wanted to say. Um, um, I do have something on my mind, but first thing I like to do is we have to really meditate and give thanks to Yashua the Messiah for this reason alone, that he picked you to come in here to hear his voice and that he came in to save you from that that's going on out in this world. Now, nobody can come up in here and tell you that this world is not chaotic. In the it's chaotic. It's insane. It really is. It's it's gone beyond the level of comprehension of how crazy this world feels. And if this doesn't indicate in your heart and in your mind that you need a savior, we're gonna look at you crazy for this purpose. There's too much mental instability going on. There's too much, it's just too much. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't explain, I can't describe it. And, and it's gotten to the point where you have different souls out here believing in what they believe in. Now you got people talking about Jesus coming back on a cloud and this, that, and the other is going to save us from this stuff. Well, here's your first problem. Jesus Christ is not his name. That's, right. That's your first problem. Second problem is he's here to save your soul. He's not here to save your physical and body. He's here to save that invisible part of you. He's not here to save the visible part of you. He's here to save the invisible part of you. That when you leave your physical body, there's a soul that steps out. The question is going to be that when that soul steps out, is it in the life of Yahshua the Messiah? Or are you what? Carnal minded. And if you're carnal minded, you know what, you know what happens see, at the end. So what I want to do is, is that I want to go back to the times I first came to Christ. So Go to John 17, 1 through 3, please. Because when we first came into class, we all knew that we were physically living, but we didn't know what eternal life was. Because we didn't know what was going to happen in the beyond. Let's be frank about this thing. Before I came into class, I said, okay, we're going to die. We all going to go to heaven together, whatever you believe. But that's not how it works. Yahshua says, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the what? My life. Well, you got to go, you have to have the truth to see the way to be alive. Right? I hope so because you understand. So give me John 17 and 3, and then I want the purpose. The purpose is extremely important. Give me John 17 and 3. So when you come into this class, there will be one that Yash will use to explain to you what eternal life is. See, so go ahead, read. 17 and 1. This is John 17 and 1. Now, when you use your pattern, see, we are talking about Yahshua the Messiah making a prayer. So when you use your pattern, because your pattern is threefold, see, you have a court roundabout with the altar of sin sacrifice, the brazen labor, the brazen cup of anointed oil. You got the holy place, which is the golden candlestick, the golden table to shoot bread, and the what? Golden uh, 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 altar of incense. 
where the priest offered prayer three times a day, one at nine, one at 12, one at three. And then you go past the second veil, you have the what? Most holy place. See, where you have the two archangels attached to the what? Mercy seat, you understand? And that typified the what? Throne of Yahweh. You understand? So when we go to John 17 and 3, you are watching Yahshua the Messiah fulfill, offering up a prayer. And he offered this prayer three times. Mm -hmm. See? So when you see that, what did he, and now you, I want you to understand that the disciples didn't know to pray because what did they do? They fell asleep. But after the day of Pentecost, this prayer was revealed unto the apostles. What did Yahshua the Messiah say within himself? Read. Go ahead. This is John 17 and 1. Go ahead. These words spake Yahshua. These words spake Yahshua. And lifted up his eyes. Now these are the words. You want to talk about the Lord's prayer? Okay, this is this is this is the Lord really talking. Okay. The Lord means Baal, and you know what I mean. Okay. So Yahshua said within himself, these words spake Yahshua, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, What? Father. The hour is come. He said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son. Read. That thy son may also, also may glorify thee. Read. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Go ahead. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Stop. If he give you a number of how many will receive eternal life? No. But the father did give him, <laughs> I know, but you don't know that number. That's not your business. Go ahead, read it. And this is life eternal. This is life eternal. That they might know thee. That they might know thee. The only true Elohim. The only true Elohim. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So if there's a true Elohim or a true God, that means there's plenty of false ones. Plenty, including you. Oh, yeah, you can put yourself and make yourself in. Then we look at you fall apart. Then let me start talking and saying stuff. So go ahead. That's eternal life. See? And coming into the school, you get to see, you get to hear what the purpose is. You get to hear what the pattern is. And you get to hear the what? Plan. See, there is a plan for this. And it's through this pattern you see the plan. Plan of what? Plan of salvation. This is what you're supposed to be preaching. You understand? Because you're talking about the saving of a soul that's made up of nine attributes. See, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power. That is the part that's in shape and form that's going to step out of these physical bodies. And you have to know your Savior before you leave this physical body. Now I need the purpose. Go ahead. I need Ephesians 1 and 6. You know what eternal life is. But there's a process in getting what? Eternal life. <laughs> By the past. Because first of all, whatever concepts we came in with have to be what? Oops, I'm sorry. I don't want this to turn. See, whatever... Whatever concepts we came in with have to be what? Burnt up. Then it has to be what? <clears throat> washed away. Then a concept burnt up, washed away. Burnt up, <clears throat> washed away. Burnt up, washed away. And then what happens? Come to the door and you're only anointed once. There is no repeating anointing. You are anointed once. You understand? So go ahead, give me the purpose. Ephesians I'm talking to you one and six. Yeah, sir. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Read. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Read. So redemption through his blood. So the first thing you get to find out that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross for you. Why? No J, no Jesus. That's right, I said it. No J, no Jehovah. And all you have to do is do what? 
some simple research to find out how old the letter J is. He died 2,000 years ago. The letter J is 400 plus years old. Let me, let me do some math. 2,000 minus 400 is 1,600 years. So what do they call them 1,600 years before that? See? Read. Go ahead. The purpose. I, I, I'm, I don't want to get distracted. I want to deal with the purpose. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. But the riches of his grace. Read. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Now he abounded towards us all wisdom and and prudent, read having me know un, made known unto us. Wait a minute, he made something known unto us. Read the mystery of his will, the mystery of his will, read according to his good pleasure. According to uh -oh. he didn't say your good pleasure, it's his good pleasure because he just likes to see his offspring live. Read which he hath purposed in himself. Which he purposed in him that it's within Yahshua the Messiah. This whole thing is purpose. I almost want to get Isaiah 45 and 5. Hold that one. But keep reading. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, yes, he might gather together in one all now, wait a minute. In the dispensations of the fullness of time, he might gather together what? In one, yes, all things in Yahshua, in Yahshua, both which are in heaven. Hold it. What's in heaven? Ah, third. Oh, well, see, he's not someone talking. I should have him get on the floor. Oh, anyway, wait, go wait, ahead, read. Wait. Read. And which are on earth. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Which are on earth? Who are that? The souls of men. Read. Even in him. Even in him, right? Because once you have the two-thirds of the angels and the souls of men, you just made one whole body. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say what you mean. You want me to go back to Revelation? <laughs> okay, let finish the purpose. Please. In whom we also have obtained an inheritance, yes. being predestinated, According to the purpose of... And if you are a king and a priest on this earth plane, guess who your inheritance is? Oh, y'all better start looking up stuff. We do not tell the priest who did not receive, not, did not receive a physical inheritance, and he told them, I, Lord, find that for me, please, so they, so they know I'm just not talking off the top of my head. I want that found. Because see, if you're kings and priests in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, Yahshua just told you, I am your inheritance. What's our 10th age? Eternal life. life, what? Yeah. Now, in the kingdom, okay. with the hope, who's given eternal life again? Didn't he pray the prayer in the 17th chapter, John? Read. Come on. Predestinated according to the so that means this whole thing was planned. Uh, yeah, I know people don't like this sometimes, but this whole thing was planned right here. That means he didn't ask for your two cents. Yes, sir. That means he didn't ask did you like it or not. He didn't say none of that. You were just in the planning. So when he takes on a shape and a form. Now we're executing the plan or the purpose through a pattern. I'm trying to be simple. I don't want this complicated. Just like when your mother and your father came together, we want a baby. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, shape and form time. Conceive, shape and form. Here you are. Bye. Blood, water, air. It's just that simple. It's not hard. Keep reading. I'm talking too much. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we just don't have a purpose. This is the purpose. This is the purpose. See? Read. To a verse that we should be to the praise of his glory. That what? It should be that we, yeah, you involved now. 
that we should be the praise of his glory. Ain't that right? You're not here to, well, you can totally get into that. Go ahead, keep focused. Go ahead, keep going. Who first trusted in the Wait a minute, you said trust. Trusted in who? Son. What's his name? Yashu. Look up the definition of trust, please. I'm taking my time. I don't care the bell rings. It don't matter. I'm taking my time for this purpose. People, you're supposed to worship him right. in spirit and in truth. I'm not supposed to be looking at your butt. That's right. How am I supposed to be having you, your image in my mind saying this, that, and the other? Right. So I'm going to take my time. The bell name, the bell name. Get me, get, you finish that. Give me trust before you finish that because you started first trusted in him. How do you trust in something? By the evidence and the proof. Yeah. And it continues. Let's do it this way. I go in an elevator. I never been up one before. I go in the elevator. It go up, it go down. I come the next day. It go up, it go down. Do you know you get to the point you don't even think about it no more? You just get on the elevator. Press the button and you go up. And then when it's time to go home, you go down. The only time you worry about something is that the elevator breaks. The Yashua doesn't break because he elevates you. All right. Give me trust, please. I'm taking my time. Go ahead. Read. This is trust from the Marion Webster Online Dictionary. Read. Assured. You are assured. Reliance on. Wait a minute. You are relying on. Read. Reliance on the character. Your reliance on the character. Ability. Ability. Strength. Strength. Or truth. Or what you say? Or truth. Or truth. Isn't there a scripture that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light? I know I'm making y'all work today. I'm sorry. I just got to do it. Say so it's not what I think what the truth is. It's what the truth is. You get my point? Say, read. Or the truth of someone. The or truth some of someone. Or something. Or something. Read. One in which confidence is placed. One in which confidence is placed. So where is your confidence supposed to be? I trust that my car will start. What if it don't? I trust I have a job. What if it don't? What you're supposed to put your trust in is the Messiah. Because the one thing he is is consistent. Why is that? Because he's a pattern. And it happens over and over. You know what's in the pattern? Look at the court round the bow for just a moment. Mm -hmm. You look at the altar of sin sacrifice. That represents his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You look at the brazen labor. What does that represent? There. Mm -hmm. You look at the cup of anointing oil. Mm -hmm. That represents a what? Resurrection. What keeps repeating every day? Again. Again. In a resurrection. Did the sun go down last night yesterday? Did the sun rise today? Mm -hmm. Did you get up out of your bed after coming out of a sleep? And then the head came up first. And then you went to the wash room because you're a little right. To, because that's a death too. And you got to go wash yourself so you can be clean. So you have to bury yourself in water, don't you? I hope so. You know what I'm talking about, bro. So have you noticed that your heart beats 70, 70 beats a minute? If nothing goes wrong, do you ever think about it? Huh? Because as long as this is you, what do you think about that? As long as you're are you thinking about your breath? You don't think about it until there's no breath. Or you have a problem with your lungs. Right. Ain't that right? Read. I'm talking so much. Go ahead, read. A dependence on something future or contingent. Future! Or what? Contingent. Ah, you do understand there's an event coming up. He told you there's the end is coming up. 
get in it already. One time, in the what? Antediluvian age. And it ended again in the what? Post-diluvian age. What are we about to tell you now? It's going to end at the end of this age or probationary period. That means the natural will be no longer. I think the end repeated itself. That wasn't there a war in heaven? Didn't that end? Get it? Wasn't there? Didn't what wasn't there? What what didn't the creation come in an eternity? Didn't that end? At transgression, they were kicked out of the world. God. Didn't Noah have a vision that there would be a what flood? Didn't that come to an end? Uh-oh. Did the Yahshua the Messiah say on the cross that it is what? Finished. Does that mean he was finished doing what? Fulfilling the what? The law and the testimony. And as soon as he got out of that body, he went to the captives that were in the grave. Didn't they see him? Didn't they resurrect him to New Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Above? You see? Now, then you come over here and we keep telling you that you're going to have to have an end of your the end of the physical creation. Why am I saying that? Don't you have an end to your physical body? It's going to end, right? And, and, and we weren't even talking about a universal revelation. You're going to end, right? So you ain't going to live in this physical body too much longer. Ain't that right? Well, we hope not. Because, child, please, this physical body is a mess. Okay, let's go. All right. Keep reading where I'm at. Okay. Yeah, finish the definition. Okay. A reliance on future payment for property such as merchandise delivered. Read. A property interest held by one person <laughs> for the benefit of another. Okay, I don't care about the property. Go ahead, keep on. A combination of firms. Okay, that's enough. Money. That's enough. Go back to the purpose. And then I want Isaiah 45 and 5. See? And then I'm going to deal with <laughs> a little bit of the scripture lesson. The child Yako was working that day yesterday. Go ahead, read. Ephesians 1 and 13. Read. In whom ye also trusted. Trust. After that, ye heard the word of truth. You heard it. Not with these physical ears, but your soul heard something. See? Read. The gospel of your salvation. The gospel of whose salvation? Your salvation. Your salvation. Read. In whom also, after that, ye believed. You believed after you were shown what? The proof and the evidence that went by the pattern. Who is him? You don't just accept anything off the floor just because, oh, I like him. I like her. She sounds good. You did that when you went out in the church. But we don't want you to do that out here in the church. This is not a church. It's a school. But if you do, you write down stuff and get it confirmed by the teacher, who's Yahshua the Messiah, who is the comfort. You get the point? Read. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's when you were sealed. See? Because you trust in the evidence that he provided to prove himself. Mm -hmm. See? He didn't have to use us to prove himself. You know that, right? I hope you know that. You don't have to use us. Do you go out there and lift the sun? Physical? You can't even get out in the outer space to even come close to the physical sun. So stop it. You understand? So you see, you're seeing the signs that he has provided to let you know he's the one. Read on. Which is the earnest of our inheritance yes. until the redemption of the purchased possession. Yes. Unto the praise of his glory. Unto the praise of his glory. Now, see, the only reason. The reason why I went into the purpose is, is for this reason. First of all, two thirds of the angels kept their. Can you read the spread of the scriptures about the angels that kept their first estate? And then I want you to quickly go over to Revelation. You know what? I, I, I see. I'm going so fast. I need Isaiah 45. Five. I'm flying already, and I should be flying this fast. Go ahead, Isaiah 45 and five. This is Isaiah 45 and 5. Read. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is. Let's try this again. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. So that means he came out of pure spirit. There he is. There he is. Read. There is no Elohim besides me. There is no Elohim besides me. 
All the other Elohims you're thinking about, they're all your imaginations and concepts. Read. I girded thee. Though. I girded thee, though thou hast not what? No me. Oh, read. so he took care of you before you knew him. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Go ahead, read. That they may know from the rising of the sun. Uh oh, here we go again. From the rising of the sun. And from the west. Read. That there is none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I form the light. And wait, wait. I form the light. Here's the form. Boom. And what did he do next? And create darkness. There's your loser. Read. I make peace. He, he makes peace. And create evil. And yes, he did. That's what he did. Read. I, uh, now, why you make evil? Why you make evil? Why you make evil? So you can see yes, to see the power of what? Salvation. Because you know you can get out of this. The state that you were in was evil. Carnal mind is a mess. Isn't it? All right. Go ahead, read. Go ahead. I Yahweh do all these things. Now, now Yahweh does all these things. Read. Drop down ye heavens yes. from above and let the skies pour down. Right is that down. where it is where it says I purposed it? Yeah, I, it, it, yeah, I purposed it. Yeah, I will, it, it will come to pass. Is right. that the one? 46, uh, 46, That's 46, 9 and 10. Yeah, I'm glad. Okay. Please correct me. This is Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Read. Remember the former things of old. Yes. I am Yahweh. Yes. And there is none else. Read. I am Yahweh. Read. And there is none like me. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning. Read. And from ancient times to the things that are not yet done. Read. Saying, yes. my counsel shall stand. Yes. And I will do all my He pleasure. says, all my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Read. Calling a ravenous bird from the east. Read. The man that executed my counsel from Read. a far country. Read. Yea, I have spoken it. He spoken it. Read. I will also bring it to pass. And he will bring it to pass. I have heard Now that's it. a consistent Elohim. You want to go back to Abraham? I will bless your seed as the stars of heaven and as the sands of the seashore. That he would bless both families, both Jew and what? Gentile, did he do it for a hundred years later? He got the Jews down there, so they were crying for a savior. He appeared down there as what Joshua the son of Nun. See, he and then what did he do? He got the Jews through the law, and then guess what? The Gentiles came in by what thing? They didn't have to do the law. Go ahead, read. Yeah, I think they did a little bit. Of, then, okay. Yeah, I purposed it. I yeah, will, yeah, I go will. ahead. I will also do it. I will. So did, did he say you would do it? No. You want I, your help? You need your help. You sure? We'll be sure about people because people think they can just help him along. You don't help him along. He gives you instructions and you do it. That's how it works. Read. Hearken unto me, ye stout hearted. Oh, wait a minute. Hearken unto me, you hard headed. <laughs> Weren't we hard in? Come on now. Well, sit here and say, oh no, I was the softest mind and I just took everything I did. We were carnal mind, so don't play. So now, this is what I want to do. Because it, it was so much fun. See, look. The scripture lesson, get me to the scripture lesson so I get because you already know what the purpose is, is to gather all those angels and the souls of men. So we're going to do this idea. Hopefully it can come through real quick because I don't want to stay up here all this time. But I want to get to the point because the point is, is that as a third of those angels that did not obey Yahweh, you understand, in heaven, they had to be cast out. That means there's a space. There is a space. Because a third of the angels were kept. You know what? Let me stop talking. Revelation 12 and 7, please. Then I hold the scripture list. 
I want you to see what Yahshua is doing. He's still saving souls. The day of Pentecost is still going on, which means the soul has the opportunity to know his creator and his savior for himself. What does that mean? That as a third of the angels were cast out of heaven, now you see where the souls of men are coming from? He created that. And those that believe in him, that's a third that's going back up to fill the space that's left by those disobedient angels. Revelation 12 and 7. Okay. Revelation 12 and 7. Three. And there was war in heaven. Three. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Three. And the dragon fought and his angels. Three. And prevailed not. Three. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Their place was not found anymore in heaven. Why? Stop. Hebrews 1 and 6, please. I'll be here all day. I, mean, I'm, I, I won't be here all day. Go ahead. 1 and 6, please. This what is, were the angels supposed to do when they were created? This is Hebrews 1 and 6. Read. And again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, Read. He said, Read. and let all the angels of Elohim worship him. What do you, he said, all. Then, yeah. all. Oh, he didn't say a little bit. He said, all. Read. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Cool. Now go back to Revelation. Now you know what the law is in heaven and with the angels. You're supposed to worship, honor, and what again? Obey. Now, read. And 10 verse. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Read. Now stop there, and I need you to go to Revelation 12, 1 through 3. I'm working with those people. 1 through 3. Yes. And the temple... And there appeared a great woman in heaven. Yes. Okay, and there appeared a great woman in heaven. Read. I'm sorry, a wonder in heaven. A Read. woman clothed with the sun. <laughs> Read. Yeah. And the moon under her feet. Read. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Read. And she being with child cry, travailing in birth. Yeah. And pain to be delivered. Yeah. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Read. And behold, a great red dragon. Read. And a great red dragon. Lion one. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns, Ray. and seven crowns upon his head. Go ahead. And his tail drew the third part of the what star. His, what did it do? Drew the third part of his the His tail. Now it says T A I L in the book, doesn't it? Right. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about T A L E. That means somebody lied to you. You know how people like to gossip and none of them do it. Someone lied. I don't have to give you a physical example of a certain person that's running for a certain office than what that was. Okay, do I? No, cool. So his th the third, the third just he just drew them out. That means there's a space. There's a space that they can't go back. So what does Joshua do? Let us make man in our image after our life and let them have no dominion over the fish of the sea, no what? Pile of the air. You understand? And let them have that dominion. They were happy up here until the third party came in. Ooh, did I say third party? Yeah, up here was just Adam, Adam and Eve in a communicate in full communication with their creator until the third party came in. What you talked about. Genesis 3 and 1. And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field and whom Elohim had made. And did the serpent talk? Now, people, girl, now get this understood. When we're talking about a physical serpent, I dare any woman up in here to talk to their serpent or talk to the serpent physically. I'll get a physical serpent and I'll put it right next to you. Heck, most of you will jump out this house, out this room and run. We're talking about characteristics. 
Read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Yeah, yeah we all him as what? Nay. Hey. Hey. Read. And he said unto the woman, Read. Yea, hath Elohim said, Read. Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Read. And the woman said unto the serpent, Read. We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Yes. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Read. Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Lest ye die. Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not surely die. See, lie. Right there. They didn't know what death was. So see, to make this long story short, the woman was deceived by the serpent and, the, and Adam willingly died for his bride, meaning that he transgressed too. They had to come out of that garden, garden after the what? Judgment. You understand what I'm saying? And he judged all, all three. <laughs> and guess what? Two would be the Adam and Eve would be saved by what? Childbearing. Uh-oh. But the third one, he was cursed. Uh-oh. You see the third now? Uh-oh. There's the third. There's the third. What are you talking about? Lucifer represented the third. You got you got that third of the angels that were cast out into the what? Unfinished earth. You understand? And they didn't understand what Yahweh Elohim was doing. He says they just saw this creation. Boom, boom, boom. And then you see what's happening over here. So now you got to look at people. You are not going to count a third of the souls of men to find out how many actually have. It's not, that's not happening. See, but because they were going to be saved in childbearing. Well, who is the savior that's going to bring them through? See, now I'm talking about the scripture lesson now because he has to bring you through the fire. What's in the court roundabout? Altar of sin sacrifice. Then the fire had to burn continually. And if we concentrate on the court roundabout, what's the only vessel that has fire? The altar of sin sacrifice. The cup of anointing oil is for anointing. The brazen labor is for washing. He is bringing you through the fire. See, now the reality of it, I can't do that yet. Now I want you to give me Exodus. Exodus what? Exodus what? 12th chapter. Real quick. I got to do this fast because I know I don't have time. So in Exodus, the 12th chapter, when they had to take out a what? What did they have to take out? Roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and what? Yeah. Bitter herbs. Roasted. Now y'all thinking barbecue. We ain't talking barbecue. We're talking roasted I want to let I want you to also see how Yahshua the Messiah had to go through the fight. What? Yes, he did. Now get me wrong. What you mean? So when Yahshua the Messiah in the fulfillment, you understand? You understand? Well, actually, in Isaiah 53, 7, when he had to take on upon our transgression, and he went from pillar to what? Post. He saw Herod. He saw the Sanhedrin Council. He saw what? Pilate. They all roasted him. You better look up the definition of the word roast because y'all ain't going to understand what I'm talking about. Look up roast. And so it shouldn't be too surprising why you roasted. If the Holy Spirit be in you, if he got roasted, why are you so surprised you ain't getting roasted? What I mean, those fiery darts from Satan himself and those damnable spirits, they roasting you too. Yes. Every day. Yeah. They get up. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And who's gonna prevent you from being completely burned up? You're gonna get roasted. I'm talking about <laughs> roast, roast, roast definition online di dictionary. Read. Uh, criticize what criticize. criticize or reprimand severely. Reprimand severely. Did Yahshua do anything wrong? Yeah, he was criticized. And he was reprimanded severely. Read exposure to heat. Oh, what you said? Exposure, exposure to heat. To heat. Yeah. Now we know that Yahweh is a consuming fire. You understand? But go ahead, read. Uh, okay. Okay, Shall we go to the physical trial of Yahshua the Messiah and show you how he got roasted? Okay. okay. You talking a lot. Shh. Go ahead. To, to humorously criticize and make jokes about a famous place. Jokes. Yeah. 
Hee hee. Ha ha. Tease. Read. That's why you better be, you have, you have to be careful. Large piece okay. of That's called meat. roasting. Read. Now then the children of Israel had to eat that roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herb, and they had to come out of the land of Egypt. See? They had to resurrect after the lamb was roasted. What am I saying? Yahshua the Messiah had to be roasted before those souls that believed in him from Adam all the way down. Remember, they did not resurrect. Where are they located according to the pattern? Thank you. Hell is a what? They had to wait for very few. Can you imagine? You better think about this. Think about this. Adam lived 930 years after he became carnal minded. That means his soul came out of his soul came out of that physical body. And then he has to wait another 3,000 years. Thank you. Can you imagine being in an important real estate? You waited 3,000 long years until your Savior showed up and came into those graves and said, come follow me. Get my point? Read. That was all. That was all for roast. Okay. So you know they had to eat that roast. Where's the roasting taking place? In the what? Court round about. Where are you on, people? Earth. Earth. Hold it. Hold it. What did the altar of sin sacrifice represent? Earth. Earth. Why is that? Because when they saw that vision of Elohim, wasn't he standing on the on a blue sapphire that looks like what? Earth. And don't you know that if you do any investigation on the dimensions of this altar of sin sacrifice, that it goes around 90, 90, 90, 90, and that's what? 360. And you know what's in the heart of the earth? You got all that molten lava? Ain't that right? Isn't that hot? Okay, let me get more specific. What's your temperature for your physical body to function? 98.6. I think that's a little hot, isn't it? So the temperature, just a little bit? All right, we'll put you in. So anyway, and then I'm not even discussing the fact that when you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were thrown in the what? Ah, and who appeared down there? In the in when, when they were thrown in the fire, you understand? You want me to read that too? We can read that. But the Son of Man appeared down in the furnace. What am I looking at? Yahshua the Messiah is down here, y'all. Don't you understand? He's down here. You want me to get you want me to get First John four and four and one? The, the Spirit speaketh expressly those the yeah if, if those that Yahshua the Messiah is in the flesh. Is 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 in the flesh is of Yahweh. Those that you better get it. I'm gonna mess it up. Child, I just ran through stuff. So see, my point is this: Yahshua the Messiah had to go in the grave after his what crucifixion, or say that he fulfilled the what law and the testimonies, and he picked up every single soul from Adam all the way down to his resurrection. Can someone do me a favor and count every last soul he picked up out of the grave from Adam all the way down? You can't count, can you? Now you know what's about to happen. Keep you have what I call for. Just hold. Get, get, you, if you got it, fine. If not, because I have to extend First the pattern. First four and one. Here's where you come in. Come on, go ahead. For love, believe not every spirit. Read. But try the spirit whether they are of Yahweh. We. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Jesus coming back. Hereby. That's a lie, isn't it? You know how many people believe that? Okay, then go ahead, read. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Read. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua, Every spirit that confesses that what? Yahshua the Messiah. Is? Is come. Is come. In the flesh. In the flesh. Is of Yahweh. Wait a minute. How many years ago was that written? How many? 2,000. Ain't that right? About that. If he's not come inside your heart and mind, why you yet you get in a physical body? Uh-oh. And those spirits that confess that Yahshua the Messiah is not coming to flesh. And every spirit, what? every spirit that confesses that Yahshua the Messiah is coming to flesh, excuse me, let me start that. And every spirit that confesses not 
not that Yahshua the Messiah is coming to flesh. Yes, it's not of Yahweh. It's not of Yahweh. That sounds like a hole to me. That sounds like darkness to me because the candlestick has not been what lit. Does that mean you tired on my way? You don't know no savior. See, I, I, I digress. This is what I'm trying to tell you people. What I'm trying to tell you, I don't to say anything. You need to do it like this. Yahshua came to you. When, and guess what you're going through? You're going through the fire. That's right. Let me extend this for you now. Uh, see, I, I told you that too much fun. Now watch. He did this in the fourth dispensation. Is that right? And according to the pattern, the fourth step is the what? You see this? Now, I'm going to extend it. You see this? It's called the first age, second age, third age, fourth age. He's still adoring. Mm -hmm. He's still picking up souls in there. You see what's about to happen? That at the close of this age or this probationary period, that would have meant that Yahshua the Messiah has his third and, and they're right back when in heaven. Remember, I told you Satan and his host were cast out. Now they're down, down to you. What did they say in Revelation 12 and 7? Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath. Why he's so mad? Because he can't go back. So what? The, the that's right. And guess what? He's just found out the Holy Spirit is being resurrected in you. So what's about to happen? You're about to get criticized. Put some doubt in your soul. He don't work. I told him he don't work. See? And you call yourself a son? I didn't even get that scripture. Wait, so he's giving you the power to become what? Sons of Yahweh, because that's what the angels are. So now, when he's done with, we already got the angel. They already went through those problems. They're just sitting here taking orders. You have to go. The question has to be: Do you have the faith? Do you have the faith to know that it don't matter what happens to you, he got you. All I know for this soul, I got it. He got me. Whatever I go through, he still got me. So no matter how crazy sometimes you act like a fool, you're like a two year old, and that was not fine. He still got you. He'll just let you cry, get yourself tired. Is now that you can pay attention to him? You understand? In here crying all day long, he's sitting right there with you, and he said he would not leave you. He said he would be with you to the end of the what? Age. 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 Better believe it. You understand? Know I can't make you believe. All I can do is I can testify to that that Yahshua has given me. So at the end of at the end of this fourth age and sixth dispensation, the third would have been filled up. So remember, in order to be like that, you have to go through the fire. Well, guess what, people? Be of good cheer. Why? Because you are more than conquerors through who? Him. Through him. And let, I didn't even get to the part that at the fourth step at the migratory track, wasn't he a, wasn't he a cloud? And that he was a pillar of fire, and he divided the children of Israel from the Egyptians. Didn't they go through the fire? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. It's called the lake. They, 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 that was a lake, and they were protected. People, what am I saying to you? He's protecting you. He's a consuming fire. He's far more powerful than you'll ever be. All you have to do is power with him, not power to take him over, not power to do an insurrection, not power to do this, that, and the other. He gives you an order. Yes. Yes, sir. Now you can go go around and do what Moses did. I did. I'm, I I can't do this. I ain't qualified. I ain't this. I ain't that. I ain't this. I ain't that. 
You know what my answer was? Thank you for your comments and concerns. Just believe in him. Worship, honor, and obey. We'll get you through the fire, just like you did with Shaq and Meshach. We'll get you through the fire so that you may work. Worship him and work. Spirit and in truth. Keep your talent. You understand? You don't have to be a speaker on the floor, but he knows what your where your mind is. You understand? And he will keep you close to him at all. Sorry, I didn't do the lecture justice, but I hope you got the purpose. That you are part of that third that's going to fill it back in heaven. But remember the purpose. The purpose is to gather all those in heaven and the work. And both are not all for The two thirds that are in heaven and the one third that is down here is taken up. So with these few words, I say, I'm Thank you, Dr. Patrick Ritzwortu, and it's a pleasure to all our final speaker this afternoon, Dr. John. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And um, I am happy and glad to be here. I truly did enjoy it. And I give them all the honor and all the glory to deserves more than I could ever do. And uh, I am just thankful. Um, the last vessel talked about the purpose of Yahweh. And I, that's one of the things that I definitely enjoy talking about, the purpose of Yahweh. Um, Give me a moment here. I'm sorry. I'm just going through something. All right. Um, I guess what's lately I've been just feeling a little sad. And the one thing about me is when, you know, I don't want to, as a vessel, I hate getting up on the floor and crying. <laughs> but I'm subject to do that, and I just can't help that. You know? It don't bother me too much because you know I look at you guys as family. So that don't bother me too much. <laughs> it only bothers me when I do it and I can't stop. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. All right. Happy times. Okay. Um Yashin Masai, who indeed his purpose for coming down here on this earth plan was not to set an example for us to do. You know, and that is what I thought, that if I could just do something, that I would prove myself to him. And I find out that I was headed straight to the lake. That's how wrong that was. So there is nothing that you can do, see, except ask him, to show himself to you in such a way that you can receive an understanding. And that's what we want. That's what we need. Because his mission was to fulfill the law that was given to the Jews and to the Jews only. See? And I know I said the law. His mission was to fulfill the law and the prophets. Let's say it that way. See? Now I'm going to put this in there as well. He, before the law was even given to Moses, he fulfilled that stuff too. Now, we know that Genesis is part of the law, but you got to understand something, that the law didn't come into, wasn't given to the time, correct that real quick, 
the, the law wasn't given to the children of Israel until after they came out of Egypt and were out here in the wilderness. Now, that law that was given to them was a law that had uh, baptism, sacrifices, and commandments, and different things they had to do from a physical standpoint. That law. Now, the law that brought the creation in is before this Ten Commandment law. All right? Now, that is the law of the Spirit. That's the law, see, that controls if you jump off of a building. See, be you Jew, be you Muslim, be you atheist, be you can be whatever you want to be. But when you hit that ground, see, it ain't going to matter. You're going to be dead. See, that law you cannot violate. See, now get this straight. That law is the law that brought in the whole creation. Uh, everything. See, that law brought in all the different scientists that come up with the different laws of gravity and all the different laws. See, that law was before gravity. See, that law is before everything. That is what holds this thing together. See, that is what can hold you together. Mm -hmm. See, that is the only thing that can. Now, this thing has been said. That's the only thing. That can conquer these evil spirits. Now. There is no way that a physical church, a physical religion, a belief that I am a Roman Catholic, I am a Muslim, I am a Hindu. See, there, and, and do you want to know why? Because before there was a Buddhist, before there was a Methodist, before there was a Catholic, before there was a whatever you call yourself. See, before there was any of those things, but listen, those evil spirits, they were cast down here. And they were cast down before any of that stuff even came into existence. All right? So, now, we're going to look at something, talking about the purpose. Now, the purpose of Yahweh, as the last said, and I think he's got, he, it was read in Ephesians, what, 1, 8, 9, is to gather all those that are in heaven and on earth. Now, there was something that was said to the disciples. Uh, he gave the disciples, to, and well, he gave them the keys, that's true. But he also said, all that thou had bound on earth, give me that. All that thou had bound on earth, that, and I'm, we're going to see how this is actually worded. because, it's, And then I want that, and also I want, right here, this is the book of life. See? Mm -hmm. I know I'm pointing the elbow because you can't see the book. <laughs> okay, but there's a book in his hand. All right. So I want the book of life. I want it in uh in, uh, in uh Exodus, I think it's Exodus, or maybe, or Leviticus, I don't know. Where he said, He, he who sinned, him would I blot out from my book. Mm -hmm. I want that. I want it in, and I know I'm asking for a lot, and I'm not telling you what none of this stuff is. So therefore, if I have to wait. And I want it in Revelation, that's the way. All right, whatever I ask. This is Matthew 18 and 18. Mm -hmm. 18 and 18, go ahead. Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now, wait a minute. May, what's the difference between what and who? Anybody know what the difference between what and who? Let's look that up. What 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 did you say? What is a thing? And who is and who is a person? And who is a person? Okay, that's it. Now read it again. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall find. Now whatsoever, not whosoever, whatsoever. Go ahead. Ye shall find on earth. Shall be bound in heaven, mm -hmm. and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. All right, so now we're, so we got to look at what we're talking about. See, we got to get this so that we're not talking about the flesh. See, we're talking about the soul of a man, 
as well as when we look at these demonic spirits, they are bound. See, they are bound on this earth plane. See, they can be cast out of vessels, but they're still what? Bound down here. And they cannot, they can be loosed out of you by the preaching of the gospel, not by you. So, you know, well, not by anybody on the exit of things. like that's you either. That stuff don't work. Go ahead. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that yeah, they... That's good enough for me. Give me the uh, one that I asked for. Yeah. We're still talking about the purpose. I'm just trying to do it this way. Exodus 32, 32 and 33. Mm -hmm. Yet now... Now, I can't... Listen, you know what happened, right? They came out of Egypt, and we're going to go back into, into Egypt and then look at that separation too. See? All right, but I don't want to slow it down. It's, 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 go ahead. I'll start at 31, actually. And Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin mm -hmm. and have made them be deities of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin. Now, see, hold on. Moses is saying these people have. Do you know that? Do you know who it was that told Moses they committed the great sin? It was Yahweh that told Moses before they even came down. I mean, we said this before. Before they even came down, I said, get you on down. Because the people that you brought up have done something stupid. See? He knew what they were doing, even Moses, Moses didn't even know. But Yahweh knew what they were doing. And I, so I don't worry about me thinking about what you're doing. I don't really care because I can't see you all the time. And you can't see me all the time. But Yahweh sees you. So go ahead. Black me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Now, hold on. Out of the book that thou hast written. Now see, and class is in school. All right, so you got the you got the uh, first trip along, you got that, but the second trip and the third trip that I'm dealing with. All right, so the second trip, you got seven days, six days of creation, seven days rested, and then what was he shown? 33 days he was shown the tabernacle, the tabernacle path, right? And then he goes back up, and we know that at that time. Adam and Eve was left in the garden at rest. And then the 33 days, he was showing the workings of his tabernacle. Not just the workings, but you know, the workings, the construction, the priestly function in this tabernacle. See, he had to see all of that so he'll know how to tear Aaron, what to do as well. Okay, now look, the second trip he goes up there, picks up Adam and Eve in the garden, and he understands why Adam and Eve, see, did what they did when they, because they worshiped the golden calf. They, because the, the second time he threw those table of stone and what have you done? And you know, yeah, I don't understand what you're doing. And you, didn't we just get didn't you just get married unto Yahweh? Did he then you don't you know he brought you up and the, you know blah 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 blah. I get it. Those of stone. He didn't break the law, see, but he broke the tables of stone. See. Now then he goes back up there, protects his own tables up there, see, and then he sees his transgression. In the garden, see, and he has a better understanding why the children of Israel did what they did. Listen, he had to be elevated to have an understanding. He had to go back up, and Yahweh had to show him. Otherwise, he was just walking around here pissed off, like we get sometimes. Yeah. See, man, I just don't understand why these people are such idiots. Why are they doing this? Why did they? Why did he go in and shoot up that place? Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Why? Why was going on? Right? <laughs> no understanding. Right. So that means you got to be what elevated and be shown according to the purpose. Why this creation is such a freaking mess? Mm -hmm. Apparent chaos. Mm -hmm. See, but Yahweh knows. Just told you he knows. <laughs> so he goes on that third trip. Uh, I, I, I guess I got to say this. I keep on doing this. There's a pamphlet that's going in, what I'm just going into, for those who want to read it. About the 40s and stuff like that. All right, but anyway, the point I'm trying to get you to see, he sees that, he sees the transgression. Then he sees, that's what I want. He sees the transgression. That's important. But then he sees the generations. See, this is the third trip. He sees the generations. 
he sees everything coming out. He sees the generation of Adam, the generation of Seth, he sees the generation of Cain, he sees the generation of generation of generation. He sees it all with, as we've always said, he sees it going up into who? Yahshua the Messiah. He sees the generations on that third trip. He has an understanding that there's, and then he says in Deuteronomy, I don't know, 18, that there will be one that will come like unto him. See, how did he know that? Because he sees it up there in a the vision. He knows that someone's going to come. See, he sees it in Genesis, the 49th chapter. See, it talks about someone coming, see, of, of, of the tribe of um, uh, Judah. Uh, uh, yeah, Judah, see. Just so happens, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get carried away, but it just so happens that when you read about um, David and how Yahweh made a promise to David that his throne would last forever. See, and then what happens is Mary, see, she's of the tribe of, of David. See, she's from the, from the David's lineage. See, and it says that in the book of uh, Luke and the book of Matthews. All right. Now, we know that that seed was placed in Mary. But the point I'm trying to get you to see, it, he sees that there's going to come salvation. And the scripture says, even though they knew that something was going to come, they did not know when and they did not know how. They didn't know what and to what manner of such salvation was going to be given unto us, to mankind. See? Yeah. The angels didn't even know. See, they just did not know. See, now, so he had an understanding. And I, I did all this just when you was reading about who and what. They don't lose your train of thought about who and what. Said, whosoever sinned, did you read that? Whosoever sinned against me, him will I cast out. Yeah. Well, out of my book. Go ahead. Yeah, 33rd verse. And now he said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now, he didn't say I was going to do it. He didn't say you were going to do it. I, this is the easiest way of doing it. Me and you. That picks up everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about everybody. Else. That's just me and you. And none of us can do this. All right? You cannot. See, and as Doc said, I wanted to take that's the Roman Catholic Church, and then you've been uh, excommunicated. He said, you ought to be excommunicated. He's got it right. That's his church. See, but we ain't talking about that. We're talking about Yahshua's size body. He's the one that can put you in it. Because remember, we still talking about that purpose. He's the one that can gather you and put you in it. See, and once you're in it, you're sealed. See, that's the difference. You're sealed. Now, I believe you feel, oh, no, I need it in Revelations. Then we got to. Uh, then I'm going to go back. I'm talking about we're going to get into uh, Egypt because we're going to see that separation. Go ahead. Revelation. Oh. This is Revelation 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. You see that? He that over. You know what he's doing? He's making a distinct separation and letting you see that those evil spirits don't have a chance of getting back in there. That's what we're trying to get you to see. And, and the he, the, the who, now, the what ain't getting back in it. See, the who, you have an opportunity to be what? To be saved. Your soul has the opportunity to be saved. See, go ahead. And I will blot out his name out of the book of life. And said, I will blot it out. See, as Doc said, the Pope ain't going to do nothing. Pete ain't going to do nothing. It's Yahshua's side that's going to be the one that's going to blot. We're still, still talking about the purpose of Yahweh. See, everybody was wrote in that book. See, now... Yahweh knows who's going to remain and who's going to be taken out. See, and you and I, we have no control over that whatsoever. Now, let this soak. You might love your mama, you might hate your enemies, but you can't have no you have no control over that. You just do not have no control. The only thing that can be done is to preach the gospel. And if that don't awaken you, nothing will. You understand? You can't bow your way into this. You can't pray your way into this. Mm -hmm. No, it's by the hearing of the gospel, the true gospel, the death, the burial, resurrection. The same thing that Yahshua Messiah said, I must go into a death and bury, and then I will resurrect the third day. He told his disciples that. And what did Pete say? Oh, be a father of thee, master. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. 
See, that's a couple chapters, maybe like the 16th chapter or 17th chapter of Matthew. So ain't nothing going to happen to you. See, give me that. We still talking about this purpose. But you got to understand the difference between, you know, we, we, how do you get into the body of Yahshua? I mean, that's a good question. How do you get into the body of Yahshua? And we talk about the purpose of the gather you in. So my question is, how do you get into it? Go ahead. Matthew 16, and I started at 21. Mm -hmm. From that time forth, from that time forth, Yahshua began, began Yahshua to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Mm -hmm. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Rabbi, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, and Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of Yahweh, but those that be of men. That same thing he said in, in, in heaven. Same thing he said in, in the garden. He said, Ain't nothing gonna happen to you take of that tree. See? Keep reading. Then Yahshua said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. All right, hold on for a second. Go before that. Go before that. Uh, uh, when Satan said, said, "Ain't nothing gonna happen to you," where? Yeah, even before that, uh, a couple verses up. Okay, do you want eighteen? Uh, uh, that, that where well, he said, "I gave you the keys." <laughs> yeah, because I just remember something. Uh, we talking about the purpose of Yahweh. We are talking about how you get in there. See, so keys okay. and these are the things that we got to look at. Go ahead. Yes. Well, I'm going to start at 18. And I say unto thee, unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly. Wait a minute. You said, I will build. Because if there's a purpose to gather those in to the body of Yahshua Messiah, we got to know who is doing the gathering and how you get in there. See, and do not make this mistake. It is not a human being with a physical key. Uh, you think yeah. that sounds stupid. Well, you can get the Roman Catholic and you will see that the Pope has keys. Yeah. See, he has keys. He has two keys. I mean, he totally misunderstanding. People believe that stuff to the point where you got indulgence and all, everything is just messed up. Go ahead. And the gates of Sheol shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth. So, shall be good. so we just went back and picked up those keys. We already read that part. So see, he's given him what? The keys. See. And the keys are what class? The law and the prophets. Sorry, I did so hard. The law and the prophets. That's the keys. Remember, we said that he's fulfilled, he's fulfilled the law and the prophets that, that, that testified him to come. See, it's his death or resurrection. All right. So this is how we get into the into the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah by hearing the gospel. This is how you get to the kingdom by hearing the gospel. So what is his body? But before we even get to that, I said I'm gonna go back down here and eat it, look at the separation. Mm -hmm. Now look, it was the third after the third plague, right? That Yahweh made a separation between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. Don't you know what that means? That that was before. They crossed over. That was before they crossed over. There was a separation. Don't you see that there has to be what class? A separation when? Now, before we do what? Before we cross over that, that step, that fourth, uh, that fourth age is in. That's as simple as it could get. See, there has to be what? A separation made. See, you have to be separated or put in that body before. And what does that entail? Well, let's see. Oop, I got to eat the lamb. Mm. I got to have a lamb in me. I got to do some inspection of the lamb. I got to make sure they don't have no spots. I got to make sure they don't have no blemishes. See, I might have to do some sharing of the lamb. See, you might have to come over to my house and we might have to eat some lamb together. You might have to come to class and we have to eat the lamb together. See, there might have to be some stuff, you know, those are the things that we might have to do. See, we're going to have to see some, some actions going on. We're going to have to see, because we're going to be part of that body. So 
there has to be a separation in a physical type that points up to the spiritual. So we'll call this the land of Goshen, see, and from a physical standpoint. So the land of Goshen, you go over there. You are the chosen people of Yahweh. You Egyptians, you just take. You can have everything else. <laughs> and everything else, and I think you people that uh, land of Goshen, you should be, by trade, you should be shepherds. We're going to make you shepherds. <laughs> and we make you whatever you want to do. All right. So you're shepherds. So if you're shepherds, you are taking care. Feed my what? You see, you see how Yahweh's operating? See, we're still talking about the purpose. See, we're just slowing it down. As I said, we're slowing it down and just looking at it a little bit. See, and so we know why we have to be separated. See, and we know that, I mean, I hate to say it this way, that we know that the, how do I say it? the devil gets upset. See, and he knows that towards the end that you're going to be gathered to fight or to be with that body. See, and we don't want, and the devil don't want that to happen. So see, so I got to kill off somebody. See, you see what's been saying? I got to kill off somebody. Try to put an end to that. See, I mean, this, this stuff is tight. See, all right, now that's enough. We have to so we're going to go back down there. So we still got the purpose of gathering. And so give me Ephesians, the, uh, the first, uh, Ephesians, the uh, fifth chapter. I like this verse. The last couple of verses in there talked about the body. I also wanted in Revelations. See, where it talks about the uh, body. Uh, it could be Revelation 7 and also maybe Revelation the 14th chapter. Um, I also want this in, what is it? Is it Nahum or Baca? One of them, uh, where it talks about they'll be gathered unto that mountain. See, all the, you know, will be gathered unto the mountain of Yahweh. Uh, that you might have to uh, look that up. I think I would have missed that. All right, go ahead. This is Ephesians 5 and 25 and 22, husbands. I guess so. Ephesians 5 22, mm -hmm. husbands love 5 22, wives, submit yourself unto your you own cut, husband. You cut that up. As unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For the husband is the head of the wife, That's even right. as the Messiah. See, the head, go ahead. The head, of, head the of the assembly, mm -hmm. and he is the savior of the body. That's right. See, he's the head. We're talking about that body. He's a head. See, it was the head that led them out. See, and he's the head of the body. See, and we make up that body, both the angels as well as the souls of men. One head. See, one head. Just like it was one man in the garden. See, Yahweh, he has this thing to the point where it's simple. One man, one woman. Why? Because one man, one woman. See, and that one woman consists of the angels that kept their first estate and the souls of men. See, and there's no room for two heads. Just one head. See, and, I, and something else the last verse I've said. Look, as far as you having a, you, let me put it this way. I have to deal with somebody who has a kid or a woman that has a baby. Uh, and unfortunately, I got to look at it. All right, so Mariah has a baby, right? All right. Now, that baby did not say, it's time for me to come in an airplane. No. See, it didn't say it. It had no choice. It did, had no choice to come in here. And it didn't have no choice of the parents either. <laughs> See, he didn't know what his parents were going to be like or nothing. So he had no choice. So that baby just came on in according to the purpose. See, likewise. See, you are pulled into the body of Yahshua the Messiah. See, this is where we get into Revelations. Revelation. This is where you, Genesis the seventh, Genesis, John the seventeenth chapter. He said, "I have kept all those that Thou have given me." See, and I have lost none, class, except what son of the son of perdition. Now, if that is true, see, then we have to see it in the garden. Adam is, and we've said this many times. Adam is walking around in the garden. He's in the garden. This is before Eve came out of him. 
See, Adam is in the garden. He, Adam's got animals. You, know, you got some cows. You got some horses. You got some. You, know, you got this. You got that. You got this. See, and then he, but he did. This is the one thing he didn't have. See, he didn't have what is normal as what is to help me. See, he didn't have Eve. See, so Yahweh, you know, he said, well, you can go name them all. See, but none of them would do. Now, I'm going to be very careful how I say it. None of the beasts would do. That's right. All right. No beast would do. See, couldn't be married to a beast. See, now, you take that any way you want. <laughs> but it couldn't do it. It just wouldn't work. See, so Yahweh had to give him, mm. present him with Eve. See, gave him a wife from his own body. Mm -hmm. See, gave him a wife. Just like you are placed in your family. See, you, you know, you wouldn't just, you, uh, Doc said, I'm going to take you. You didn't say, I'm going to walk into this house. I'm yours. <laughs> <laughs> It don't work like that. That's not how it works. That's called you get even that you got to be adopted. Right. <laughs> you know, like a Gentile. You know, you don't just <laughs> why? Because you got money. I want to be in your house. That's no more than a person picking a church on the corner and walking in there and saying, "I'm a part of the body." You ain't no. This is, no, you just. Oh, can I say this? Just a bastard. Yeah. That's what it is. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but that's the first thing that came to my mind. That's all you are. I'm sorry. I'm getting carried away. What, what am I? What is that? Yeah. No, you, you did that already. Because you, well, did you finish that? The body. You love your wife, husband love your wife. Like, so that's that's what that is. See, and one wife, as we said before, and even Yahshua Messiah said, but the scribes and Pharisees were trying to test them about all that stuff. See, and he said, from the beginning, it was not so. There was one woman, see, and one man. He, he said that. See, now why would he say that? Because you have to understand that from the beginning, see, what Yahweh, see, is one. See, and that's what it is. See, we make up that one body. Now, see, so we got that principle laid down. See, then we can begin to see many manifestations. See, and you should know where I'm going with this. See, many manifestations. When the true leaders came out of Egypt, they were gathered around here. It said, out of Egypt, I call my son. See, and, he, and in Jeremiah 31, 31, it said, I was married unto them. See, and they got married when they were gathered around this mountain. See, and, and there was a show of blood. See, but they were gathered around this mountain, and they broke that marriage. See, by doing what? By worshiping that golden calf. That golden calf is tenement, or it's just like it unto, see, the world, see, saying, I don't need a king. I don't need uh, that you as a husband. See, I'll pick my own. See, and that's wrong. See, that is just so wrong. See, so they were married, see, and that's what we have to do. See, we have to be married unto him. So now that's a type in the shadow. I told you about Jeremiah 31, 31. So when we see this, this principle of the body, we see it in heaven, as the last verse was said, I know what I asked for, uh, Revelation the seventh chapter, the 14th chapter, the one that talk, we talked about that, uh, that woman. Um, well, well, you're a colder son in the 12th chapter, but I want that uh, with a great number. Because um, the Jehovah Witnesses says, and I gotta be real to careful, because they're gonna be in that room, 350 of them. <laughs> in a couple of hours. So I gotta be really careful. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so what I want is about that number and then uh, I, then and then that part. They say first one it says 140, I'll tell you what it said. 144,000. Then the other scripture said after this I saw a count that cannot be numbered. See. See, and this is very important because see, you cannot number the body of Yahshua the Messiah. See, now you might say, Well, how do I go into that? And what can I pull out of the prophets? I can tell you what I can do. See, they number them out here. See, but when they cross over, see, they wouldn't allow the number them. Now, somebody tried to do that. Anybody know who tried to do that? David. David. And that was a severe mistake because Yahweh moved them to do that. And that's what scripture said. He moved them to do that. See, 
But nevertheless, he was punished. See, because you don't, you can't number. How many people, like, listen, how many people did you got in your church? Uh, eight, <laughs> 10, 15. You can't number a 5,000. You How many stars are in heaven? You can't number the stars. He said, how big a man is what? The stars are what? The stars in heaven, the sands and the sea. So can you count the sands and the sea and the stars in heaven? You can't do that. See, and what, listen, you think he's just talking about, see, this is why he, listen, I'm, I'm getting carried away again. See, this is why he, in the book of uh, uh, Matthew, the Mark, Luke, and John, he talks about that that uh, Abraham's bosom. See, and he uses this analogy of Abraham. See, Abraham has a type. See, a father of many nations. So, if that's just a type of Abraham being a father of many nations, so who's a father of many nations? The true father. See, he's a father of what of many nations. See, Abraham has to be that type. So you can't count and you can't number. See, because we count. It's the when we say one third, two third, three third, you ain't said nothing but one third, two third, three third. You ain't gave me no number, cause you can't. Now I can say one, th one third of what? <laughs> one third of an infinite amount. See, a numerable. Thank you, an numerable amount. You can't do it. There's a tape called numerable angels. Yeah. There's actually a tape. If anybody, you know, the tape called. See, go ahead. Revelation seven and nine. Mm -hmm. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, mm -hmm. of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne mm -hmm. and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes mm -hmm. and palms in their hands. That's right. Now give me, hold that. Now give me Daniel, the 12th chapter, the last couple of verses in that. See, a great number in white robes. See, you're washed in the blood of Yahshua the Messiah. See, you're made clean. See, because you listen, because remember, you're a bride. See, and you got to be clean. See, you might want to know more. Go ahead. This is Daniel 12 and 10. Mm -hmm. Many shall be purified and made white mm -hmm. and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Right. And from that time of the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, yeah. there shall be a thousand two hundred. Okay, that's good. I mean, that's good. The abomination is set up right now. And you got three and a half on one side, three and a half on one side. Mm -hmm. See, and we are living, see, and what is now called the, I believe this would be called like the time of the Gentile. So, and you got a difference between the fulfillment. That's when they come in. And you got the difference between the time of the Gentiles. See, and the time of the Gentiles we're dealing with right now. And the only way I can separate the time and the fulfillment and is they're having a good old time. So there's a time of the Gentile. They're having a good old time. <laughs> there's destruction and everything. I get carried away. Now finish. Revelation 7 and 10. Mm -hmm. Cry with a loud yeah, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our Elohim, mm -hmm. which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. That's right. See, that's what we talk. We're part of that body. See, and we are a witness to that. Uh I need it in uh, Isaiah. Uh, Let's see. Ye are my witness. Is that there's no other L? And I might have to get that because if you go to I, if you put in witness, you're gonna see a whole bunch of uh, different ones. But it said that ye are my witness. See that there's no other L. See, we are His body down here on this earth plane. You see, you are a witness that there is a true element. See, and when Yahweh is revealed from heaven, as we talk about this as our topic, when He's revealed from heaven. See, he's not coming back for you. He's not coming back for me. See, you are supposed to be with him right now. See, he's not coming back. See, listen, when they got into that ark, they got into that ark before it rained. See, you have to be separated before you go over. See, it had before the, the end of this creation. See, you have to be in that ark before that first drop of rain. See, you have to be in that ark before Yahweh was revealed from heaven. You have to be in that ark. Yeah, listen, because if you're not, you're gone. That instead of rain, I know if you know this, girl, it's fine. That's just what it is. So you have to be, and look, that was a body. See, that was a family. See, 
And just like when Yahweh went into, when Yahshua Messiah went into, into the grave, that's in Isaiah 6, the first chapter, he went into the graves and he preached to them that were in that grave, in the tomb. So he went in there. See, as it says in uh, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, that I will bring you out. See, out because he gave that parable of the bones. See, coming together, forming what? A body in Jeremiah, the 37th chapter. See, they all came together. See, there was a dry place that they came together that ran and they came together as a body. And Job said, I know that my redeemer liveth, and in the end, I shall see him for myself. See, because we're talking about a body. So you got Abraham, you got Isaac, you got all them resurrected with Yahshua Messiah. See, you got that on, listen, you got that right here. See, that death, the burial, resurrection. You got them coming on over. See, why? Why did it have to be at the end? See, they got to have them coming over. You're going to see the same thing at the end. That's the end right there. You're going to see the end right here. We're going over. See, with him. See, it's got to be the same way. A great body. See, and we don't, you couldn't count the souls that resurrected. Matthew 27, 51, 52. You couldn't count the souls that resurrected. You didn't know how many that resurrected. See, you don't know how many has gotten. And you didn't, listen, you didn't know who. You understand? You didn't know who. And you want to know why you didn't know that they didn't know who had resurrected? Because think of the years that went by. People had died. See, Abraham had died. He didn't see it. That generation, that generation, that generation. See, Noah had died. He didn't see that generation, that generation, that generation. See, people have came to this teaching. They died. And they, they didn't even see us coming into this teaching. You understand that? See, they didn't see that. See, this is a great body we're talking about. See, a body that has that name. See, holding this unto Yahweh. When that high priest went up into that, into that most holy place, see, and had the bells and had the pomegranate. See, he said, holding this unto Yahweh. But see, the why, why pomegranate? Because if you open up a pomegranate, how many seeds you get? You can't even count them. There's a great number of seeds in that pomegranate. See, likewise, see, we talk about that body. See, when that high priest came out, see, on the day of atonement, see, the 16th chapter of Leviticus, he goes up into there. See, when he comes out, as Dr. said, the one to take, be aware that when he comes out, when he goes in, he got to do what? He got to come back out. See, when he comes back out, see, he's come back out with what? Salvation. See, meaning what? Their sins have been forgiven. See, he brings those stones, see, that he took up with him, he brings them back, what? back out with him. See, that's what I'm telling you. The, the, when, when, Yah, when Yah was revealed from heaven, see what? You're with him. See, he's not going to forget you. See, you're with him. See, the only we talk about the Oh, goodness. Talk about clouds. See, don't understand that these are clouds and you see your soul make up like a, like a cloud as well. Go, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Isaiah 43. And don't be about the witness. Ye are my witnesses, saith mm -hmm. Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before we he. are his witnesses that he has chosen. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Ye are our witness, because I'll go over. Ye are our wit his witnesses. You understand that? We are his witnesses. Do, do you know what that means? We have, how can you be a witness to something that you haven't seen? You know, you're in a courtroom and you, well, you got any witnesses? Uh, that person, what you see? Nothing. <laughs> to the jail you go. <laughs> see, it's not like that. See, we are his witnesses. Now, how are you going to be, if you're part of the body, how are you going to be a witness? Well, yeah, well Yahweh did this for me. Mm -hmm. Yahweh got me out of this. Joshua, he saved me out of this. He saved me out of that. Well, wasn't that Jesus Christ? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was not Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, we are the true witnesses, not the Jehovah witnesses. See, we are the true witnesses. I mean, what are we witnessing to? See, we'll be the one to say, I mean, is, is there any reason why you say you should judge angels? You, I mean, you don't know what's really going on. See, we are his witnesses. And you to be a witness, something, you have to have some experience with him. You have to have heard his voice. See, it's, it's listen, simple way of putting it. Mm -hmm. This is the head, this is the body. This hand is moving because it's heard something from what? Here. You understand? Is that simple enough? See, the hand is a witness that is not something separate from the head. That's, that's the, how can you get it more simpler than that? Go ahead. Uh, Micah 4 and 1. Yeah, thank you. 
But in the last days it shall come to pass mm. that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it, mm. and many nations shall come and say, come. So you read that in Revelations about the nation. Many, I mean, go here. Mm -hmm. Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh mm. and to the house of the Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and will walk and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion. See, he's not just the Elohim, as it says. He's not just the Elohim of the Jews only. He's not. See, he's not a Jewish Elohim. Well, he's a Jewish Elohim. <laughs> he's, a, he's the Elohim of the mountain. Of no, you get that all wrong. His body consists of, if we only knew what his body consists of, his body consists of not this set of stuff, just this set of seven. But all, all the sets of sevens, see, that have been before this and that shall be after this. Yeah. See, yeah, I mean, that is a huge body. See, y'all, your creator is not some little pity, any short midget, see, that you can that you think of. See, no more that, that he is just the earth. Did I say that? Yeah, he's just not the earth. He's the sun, the moon, the stars, Pluto, Saturn, that planet, that planet, that galaxy, that galaxy. He's huge. See, he's the element of the universe and more than that. See, and he's the only one, see, that has the right to do what he will with his body. You don't have it and I don't have it. See, and folks, I got five minutes. Listen. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, he gives us a sign. I'm going to get gross. You eat, some food becomes a part of your body. This is the Romans 19 and 20. See, comes a part of the body. We're talking about the body. See, all the examples, Noah, Adam, see, children of Israel, all the examples. See, I eat, I don't eat uh, hamburgers and stuff like that, but I eat vegetables and other things like that, right? So that becomes, some of it becomes a part of my body. But some of it is going to be what? Waste. I don't know what's going to become waste. I don't know. And you know what? I don't really care. As long as I eat and some of it becomes a part of my body. See, because that body has to grow. See, but that's a Romans 1, 19 and 20 to let you see that Everything that he created, all the creatures, and I've been looking at this. You can go out this, step out this room, you're gonna see, you can just see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. See, and you could be the only one, as has been said before, in your block that has an understanding of the creator. Mm -hmm. See, you could be the only one in your neighborhood to be to have an understanding of the creator. Only a small, the only that food that becomes a part of that body is a part of that body. The rest is just gone. And that's just how it is. Yahweh gave you a woman for 19 and 20, and you can't do nothing with that. See, you didn't make a choice on what's going to, you could try to eat right. See, you, you know, but even if you, if you eat right or eat bad, something's got to go. Either way. Either way, something's got to go. So, folks. If you you need to ask y'all some sign, me included, to give me a sign that I am a part of that body and to help me so that I can grow and give me the understanding so I can know not to praise another and not to worship another because there is no excuse. There is no excuse. And whoever you think your God is, I'm saying this on camera, whoever you think your God is, you better find out if he's real or false before this creation was done away with. Because there was a time when it wasn't, and there, be a, and there was a time when it was, and there will be a time when it won't be no more. So you need to find out who and what. You know, you, you, you gotta find out. This gotta become, this gotta become important. Because the education that you get, the money that you get, don't you know that that's all gonna pass. That's almost called retirement. See, and you retire. And then you ain't got all the education, you, your old fool over there sitting in, you can't even get out the chair. Mm -hmm. See, you can't take it with you. See, so you need to find out who your creator is and what he wants you to do. Ask him, 
form of communication with it. It's like the head and the body. Form of communication. Yes. See, we don't want you, we don't want your hands slapping your side of the face and all that. See, without, you know, mm -hmm. you need to become part of that body. And the only way you can do that is by grace. See, with that, I say all honor and glory goes to the head of the body, who is Yashim Messiah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That ends this afternoon's class. I would like to thank both speakers, Dr. Patrick Latortu and Don, Dr. <laughs> Dr. John Quates um, for today's class. A few announcements. We meet public, publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel at 4400 Frontage Road, Hillside, Illinois on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. Monday and Thursday nights on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Twice a month on Thursdays are in person from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m., which will be announced monthly. The next in-person meeting will be Thursday, March 20, 28th. And what's the I'm sorry, um, Thursday, March 28th and Monday, April 15th. We would like to thank everyone for joining our class today. Let us all stand to be dismissed. Now unto him. Who is able to Okay, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.